This podcast is brought to you by the Team Flower Conference, an industry-leading event where flower lovers from all over the world gather together for networking, learning, and celebration. Team Flower is a worldwide network of floral professionals serving nearly 2,000 members across 34 countries, and you're invited to join the community. The 2019 Team Flower Conference is taking place March 4th through 6th in Waco, Texas, and you can head to teamflower.org slash podcast to learn more. At the Team Flower Conference, you can expect to hear stage presentations from industry leaders on inspirational and educational topics in both floral design and business, connect with fellow floral professionals and build lasting relationships in a supportive community setting, network with industry support, enjoy flower-themed celebrations, and receive encouragement for wherever you are in your journey with flowers. With both rich educational content and opportunity for true connection, the Team Flower Conference is a unique breath of fresh air in a fast-paced and competitive industry. Past attendees have described the event as food for the creative soul, amazingly relevant to all stages of floral professional development and a warm and welcoming family. Whether you're a wedding florist, a flower grower, a floral artist, or just someone who loves flowers, you're welcome here. That's something truly magical that happens when we all come together, and we'd love for you to join the Team Flower Conference. If you'd like to learn more, visit teamflower.org slash podcast for the latest information. Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, and welcome to another episode of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so excited today to talk with my friend Curry Malone, owner and lead designer of Curry and Company. Welcome, Curry. Hello. Thanks for having me. So excited to talk with you today. So tell our listeners a little bit about your background and where you came from. So my name's Curry again, and I am originally from Miami, Florida. I've been in Nashville for about probably 12 years, and I started out doing, I had a background in interior design. I lived in Tallahassee, Florida for a little bit for about seven years, and i partnered with a lady who does all of the decor for the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. I met her at TJ, no Marshall's. I was a customer service coordinator. That's awesome. (laughs) And I met her and I learned how to do all of the stuff like ordering tile and picking out linens and all of these things. So I kind of had a little bit of a background in the design area, kind of like that a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah. neat. And so, so how did you get to Nashville from Florida? Like what brought you to, to Tennessee? Okay. So it's a little weird story, but I tell everybody. So I worked for the state and one year, everybody on the Capitol got raises and none of the state workers did. And I got frustrated and I said, you know what? I want to find a job that I can make as much money as I want based on how hard I work, not by who I know or who I'm kissing up to or how many degrees I have. So, Amen. So I said, I'm going to put some applications out in Houston because that's where some of my family is. And then here in Nashville and a company called Dell called me back and I worked for them for three years and did sales in consumer and then in business sales and kind of got burnt out. 
And I was like, instead of firing me, why don't y'all just lay me off? <laughs> and he was like, okay, I will. <laughs> and I had enough severance to live off of for two years. Wow. I know I made a lot of money at Dell. Yeah, those were the days. But that's, I think, dealing with people at Dell, like, wouldn't you say that you probably learned how to deal with people mm-hmm. and customer service, yeah. like working at Dell? So one thing that they do in the training is they show you how to deal with people all over the U.S. So they know when you're dealing with people up north and in New York, like they're not being rude to you. They're just being very abrupt and like they know what they want. There's no small Southern talk. And when you talk to somebody who's in Tennessee, you know, I would just I became such a good salesperson because I knew how to deal with everybody from all over. When I had somebody on the phone from Florida or from Miami, all of a sudden my Spanish accent started to come out a little bit. Can you speak Spanish? I can. I oh, used to. That's speak awesome. It, I used to speak it fluently when I was little. Haven't had to. I had to use it for the first time last two weekends ago at the Hutton because I was like looking for a garbage bag and everybody left and it was only two people in the kitchen and they did not know how to speak English at all. What's trash bag in Spanish? So I don't know what trash what trash bag is in Spanish, <laughs> but I asked the guy. I was like, "How do you say?" You know. So the I asked the lady. I said, like, "Do you have a garbage bag?" And she's like. She just looked at me weird and then she pointed to the other guy and he came and I said, he didn't know any English. And I was like, como se dice? And I pointed to the garbage bag and he's like, oh, and then he pointed and I was like, oh my God, I just had to use my botched Spanish here in Nashville. (laughs) This is where I like pull my phone out and I open the translator app. And I like speak into my translator app. But I will say that I've been traveling before and I didn't have Mm Wi-Fi. So I couldn't get on the app and translate. And Mm -hmm. so it's like you have no idea what these people are saying, like these drivers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, you know, I could be smiling at them, cussing them out. And they just like (laughs) don't even know what I'm saying. And so one guy like the I don't remember. I was in another country and he's like, Facebook. Facebook, you Facebook. And so he like took my phone and like typed in his name. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we friend, like he knew Facebook and friends in in, like English. And like, that's it. So it was cute. But yeah, I love the translator app. I've had to use that in Nashville, like kind of in the same situation Mm -hmm. where they just look at you and I'm like, are you tired? Because it's 3 a.m. and you've been here for 20 hours. Or you just don't understand English. Like, uh, yeah, like I feel like half asleep sometimes. I mean, you know how it is. So you work for the state and then at Dell. Mm -hmm. And then after Dell, I guess like, is that when you, with your severance, you decided to launch your business and your design business from there? So I sat there and I had this deep conversation with my mom and I said, I don't know what to do with my life. And she's like, well, people always need a place to live. Why don't you do real estate? And I was like, no, trying to pass that exam is going to be extremely tough. So I want to say no. And she's like, well, people are always sick. Why don't you be in the healthcare field and like your sister, be a nurse. And I'm like, I don't, mom, I can't deal with vomit. Like I can't be a good nurse. So she said, try something else. So I started to get into durable medical equipment. I don't even know how I got into that field. I just stumbled into it. And during the course of that time, I had a friend who got married and it was last minute because her husband was going to be in the Air Force. And in order for her to get on his military benefits, they had to be married. So she I thought I was just going to be a guest. So things were already picked out. The venue was chosen. Everything. She asked me my advice. And I'm like, sweetheart, you know, at that time, I was like, my whole entire wedding was three grand. I don't know if you want to talk. I mean, I have really, really good taste, but I did not have a big budget. And so, you know, I got married at the little chapel that you see when you're on Browley Parkway going to Opry Mills. I got married there. And then we hotel. No, what is it? The hut. And they had a restaurant that is now a different name. It's called the West End. But before it was, it was, I don't know what it was called, but they had a two private rooms in the back and we reserved that and we paid you know for 25 of our closest friends and family to eat and I stayed at the hut in that night so you know that's how everything we were supposed to you know keep it under cost so I was like hmm you can't afford that so I said let me help you and she she said come by the house and see my centerpiece and I said sure and I was like what is that and she's like oh it's a thing called eucalyptus and it's plastic and I was like plastic and I was like well what's the black stuff at the bottom and she's like oh that's black sand I was like well who died (laughs) (laughs) and she's like no it's so that I can get my colors and my green and my black and I said okay I said well I said let me help you I don't know what I can do but let's we're gonna figure this thing out together girl and it was a beautiful wedding it was 
the most challenging thing ever. And at that moment, I had respect for people in this industry. And there's all these behind the scene things that happened that we did not know about. Like the owner, it was a hotel that was bought out a new owner and he promised her that he would have linens and he didn't. And he was like, oh, you just can't use the sheets off of the beds. And I was like, um... Okay, so that's not happening. So for your listeners sake, I'm not going to curse and tell you what I told him. But let's just (laughs) say by the end of that conversation, we had Art Pancake on the phone with his American Express card and I got everything that I needed. There you go. (laughs) So it was it was so beautiful. And we just we got everything that she needed. And everybody at the wedding kept asking me for business cards. And I was like, No, 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 I'm just doing this for her. I don't know what I'm doing. It was I mean, the if I look back on the centerpieces now, I'd be like, Jesus, I can't believe I did that. Like, I really tried to float that rose like that. It was upside down. It was, uh, she didn't know. She thought it was gorgeous. So, you know, that's how I got started one day just doing her wedding. And so many people asked me for cards. That's amazing. I feel like literally every single person I talk to, mm-hmm. every single person, it how they got into the wedding industry I mean, not just events, but specifically weddings Mm -hmm. is it was just all an accident. Like they literally were trying to help someone because they have a little bit of creative design Mm -hmm. in their brain and in their system. And it starts out really fun and it feels good to like help people Mm -hmm. like decorate and design. But then it's like oh, wow, this is a lot of hard work. And then, like, I remember when I got started, if I had a dollar for every time someone was like, well, my friend's going to do this, and my grandmother's friend's going to do this, and -and so-and-so's going to do this. And as you know now, it's like, and then the week comes up of the wedding, and like, where's all these people? Like, where are all these people? And like, I mean, again, like, I literally can count on one hand after 16 years of how many people actually pull through. And I've learned about people, like, they don't mean to be rude or bad or negative or set you up for failure. It's like, they just offer their help and then they don't know what it takes. Mm -hmm. And so they might come around for an hour and then they're like, oh, screw this. Or like, I got to go to a brunch at grandma's house or I got to do this or I got to do that. And so it really kind of opened your eyes to like, okay, I need like a real team. So when did you take the jump of like, okay, I actually guess I need business cards. And so when you officially are like, I'm in business now, like, what was that like? So In my mind, I thought I was in business, but I wasn't. So I'm sitting there and that's a funny story too, because I'm sitting there on the couch. It's December 28th. This is six years ago and it's actually my anniversary with my husband and I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I saw this commercial for Vista print for free, you know, not, you get all these cards for like nine 99. I was like, it's a sign. And so I ordered it. He's, and it's like, you got to have a name. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm in Nashville, so it has to be Southern. So maybe I should call myself Southern weddings. Like my husband's like, really? And then, so for a little bit of time, that was my name was like Southern weddings and something another. And then I remember doing my first, my first style shoot and I called Southern events. And that was really stupid. Leaving a voicemail saying, this is Curry with Southern something. And I'm calling Southern events. Like it was just so ridiculous. And I said, okay. This is not going to work. And my husband said, your name is so unique. Like you just need to make it your company's name. And I said, I'm obsessed with Tiffany and company. Like I really love that. So I'm just going to mash the two together. And that's when I thought I had a business, but I didn't technically have any work until about six months after that is my first wedding. Okay. But I mean, you actually thought it thought about it Mm -hmm. like you sat around and like thought about it Mm -hmm. like okay this is going to be the name it's funny because again every single person I talk to they're like well I started out doing this and now I'm doing this like I've changed the name four times four and guys it's really expensive to rebrand like uh really expensive and when you really want to do it the right way and so I think the first time I was like elegant weddings by Angela and then people were like 
uh, well, I need like your help with a bar and bat mitzvah and then an anniversary party. And I'm like, okay, well then I'll just do events by AP. And then I had two different websites and I had front and back business cards. And on one side it was weddings and the other side it was events of like two different logos and people were super confused. And I was even confused. And then I went to, I think, Vivid Experiences and then people thought it was a porn site. Oh. And I'm like, what? What? Oh <laughs> Sex sells, but like, <laughs> oh my God. And then, like, we tried that for a few years. And then and then it's like, no one knew what that was. And so I kept fighting the name thing. And everyone that had known me from, like, where I came from in healthcare and, you know, grew up in the industry, they're like, Angela, just, like, quit fighting it. Use your name. Like, everyone says, I'm going to call Angela. They're not going to call Vivid Exper or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, use your name. Mm-hmm. And they always used Martha Stewart as an example. And they're like, let's come up with a logo that can be carried throughout. Like it doesn't have to be weddings. It doesn't have to be events. It can be on clothing brand. It can be on products. Like, and you really start to think bigger. Mm -hmm. But when you're close to your own brand, it's funny because like, what's right in front of us like we run from it or we don't think of it so it's just it's crazy how everything like you go through all these experiences before you're like okay I have a business so I know that you did weddings for a few years Mm -hmm. and then you expanded your family Mm -hmm. and so you recently you were saying you took a little bit of time off and then you came back into the industry and so how have things changed like even in a year of having another child like I know you recently did a a big wedding and you were like oh my gosh like in a year like things have changed like Mm -hmm. what what's changed in your eyes so for the first couple years we started we were only doing we were doing weddings and design and floral and kind of everything and then I did this one wedding we all take that one wedding where we have a gut feeling like oh this may be more work than I can handle but financially the struggle's real and I I, and I need to just accept it and take it and deposit it and go on so took this wedding it was an hour outside of Mount Juliet it was at a lake I had strep throat during the wedding. And you can't call out of work people when you own the business. No, ma'am, you cannot. And then my babysitter said, you can't bring your son because he has strep throat too. So it was me, my husband, and my, my young son at the time. I think he was like five or maybe four. And I took him to this place. And I don't know if you ever seen Dirty Dancing in the hallway, the hall that they have, they, they play bingo in. It was like that, but it was still like it. It was like the coffee pot was still from the 80s. Like it was the most. And I was like, Jesus, please be a fence. I don't know what I'm doing. This is, I I don't know. Like I'm sick. I cannot think. This is a lot. And the groomsmen literally were praying over me in the parking lot. And I said, okay, Curry, you can do this. And we finally got everything done. The night was done. I was like, we've made it. I got her down the aisle. Everything was great. I mean, there was bugs all over the place. A bug got in the wedding cake. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> and then so we're, we're, we left everything. I was so sick. We just left everything at the place. And my husband's like, let's just get a hotel. But apparently there was some sort of bingo competition going on in this little town. So all the, like, even your motel sixes were like over $100 that night. And I was just like, I don't even care. Let's just find some place. And at that moment, I knew I said, you know what? I just want to be creative. I don't want to deal with all of the emotion that is attached to the brides and the grooms and sitting there like swatting flies all night and trying to get these gnats I'm like Jesus why are there so many gnats and why do people want to have outdoor weddings like I just don't understand this the cake was actually indoors oh it was nasty like do you understand like the kitchen they had never had i don't think they've ever used it for a wedding reception i think it was just only like bingo night like (laughs) i know i was like the things that we are doing for a dollar um so at that moment i knew that i did not want to do weddings anymore and i wanted to focus on more of the design and more of the floral because that's where my heart was um prior to getting pregnant with aiden i invested a lot of money in additional education i met with some wonderful people from um the intrigue group in maryland and i've met some wonderful i mean katie from ponderosa in time you got to look these people up these are people with 90k followers and i can text them 
like it's nothing and we can send each other pictures and laugh and I mean I just met wonderful people and it just changed everything so I was pumped up I was motivated I'm like I'm gonna take my business to the next level and then I got pregnant with Aiden and had to um, have surgery to help hold him in So I had to let my studio go. I had a studio in Old Hickory. Um, It was down the down the road from my daytime job so I could meet clients before and after work and during lunch break. So I like had all this like strategically planned out and here comes this sweet little baby. And he was like, nope, I'm going to put you on your ass. Okay. So I was like, okay, you know, (laughs) sure. Um, So I had surgery to keep him in. I couldn't lift anything over 20 pounds. So forget trying to pick up a bucket of flowers or do anything. Um, And I was on bed rest and I, afterwards I was still on I had to have an emergency C-section with him and all of this stuff. So it's like I'm watching all of my other vendors flourish in their business. And I was like, oh, God, everybody's like moving on to bigger and better things. And I'm just here, you know, just being stagnant and not doing anything. But I told myself I have to focus on keeping this little guy in and keeping him healthy and myself healthy. And I will get back at it. So I did that. As soon as I had him, I waited till he was about six months old. And then I slowly started to creep back in things. And at that point, it was new vendors and new people to Nashville. And like, just everybody was new, new wedding planners. I was like, well, where does she come from? And I've never seen her. And just, you know, trying to get back in the groove of things. And and then vendors that I knew and loved no longer were working. Because they got burnt out. Mm Mm-hmm. And the turnaround is huge in this industry. You really have to genuinely love what you do in order to stick around and be around for years. So I, the first wedding that I had was my friends. uh, She was getting married in Kentucky and they have been friends with ours for years. So it was my first time kind of getting back into the groove of things. And I literally was trying this new technique that I had, you know, learn or saw. And I was like, oh, I want to do this with her. It didn't work out. Um, and the photographer was like, you literally, she was like, how long until you can get me that bouquet? And I said, give me three minutes. And the best bouquet that I made to this day was made in three minutes. And my husband, no, my oldest sister looked at me and she's like, you're Neo. And I was like, I don't understand. And she's like, it's like the matrix. She's like, we all know that you're Neo, but you don't know. And she's like, at that moment, you, you figured out that you were the one. And I was like, this is deep. Like, I thought I was just, you know, I just thought that I loved what I do. And she's like, no, you genuinely have a talent for it. You are the person that once you figure out the mechanics once you're good as golden. I was sharing with Angela before the podcast a little bit about my family and kind of how we are and how we all got this talent. And I would tell people, so in Miami, where I lived, were these 14 houses in the middle of the hood. In the hood. Uh They wanted to, you know, make the community active and bring some different people in there. So there were these 14 houses that they built and my family qualified for one. My dad did pharmaceuticals for years through a company called Baxter and then did um, insurance through A.O. Williams, which is now Prime America Financial Services. So we, we were one of the blessed families that could afford to have one of these homes, but it was still like right in the middle of the hood, like across the street was the projects for people who don't know. So my mom is an artist and she sings and And she is just the most talented person ever. And she bakes and cooks and she would grow these beautiful roses in the front of our yard, but we could never keep them because the crackheads would take them and sell them. Oh my gosh. On the street. Yes. So she finally was like, I'm so tired of planting these and they're stealing it, you know, but my mom always had a natural green thumb. She was always a designer. She was always, every day I look at my mom and I'm like, Oh my God, lady, I don't know what you would have been if you wouldn't have had kids. And she's like, you know, you guys are my, you know, you're my greatest project. So I don't even try to think of it like that. But I'm like, I got to tap into what God has blessed me with. And when it comes to flowers, the, you know, the emotion that's attached with it, I'm just not, if you want somebody who's going to slap some stuff together, by all means, there's several to choose from here in Nashville. Um, but if you want somebody who's going to care and who's going to properly take care of your flowers and who's going to make sure that every petal is perfect and that 
if it's not, she's going to fix it and not let you know and have alternatives and have backups and, and just genuinely love what they do because I only have one day to get this right. I can't make it up for you. I can't say, let's do a do over. You can do if you're doing a style shoot or something, you know, but if it's a wedding, it's just you got one shot, you know, so that's kind of how I got back into it after being essentially off for a little like almost close to two years taking a break. But aren't you so proud of yourself to like go through all that, let it all go and then focus on what you needed to focus on, put your priorities straight and you can always come back. Like you can always bounce back and you've bounced back beautifully. I mean, and it, this, this shit don't happen overnight. I mean, it just, it doesn't. And like, like my next like question for you was like, you know, what is unique about your service and and what you provide? And you kind of just said it. It's like, I mean, I work with a lot of vendors and a lot of floral designers, not just in Nashville, but kind of all over the place. And they don't all care. They don't. And like, I can't even tell you how many times like I've been up on tables and crawling on my hands and knees, like because they've left and it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's like dead flowers and there's like candles that are catching the hydrangea on fire Mm -hmm. or they forgot to light the candles before they left before the ceremony is starting. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've looked up and I'm like, Oh my God, I just sent the bride down the aisle and the candles aren't lit at the front of Scarrett Bennett. Like that's happened to me. And so it's like on the planning side, when you were working at that lake wedding and you looked up and realized like, I don't want to do all this. And so I, I feel you. And so what I've learned, it's really a different mindset of the people who don't really have that creative thumb like I kind of look at flowers and they die. Like I can, I can keep succulents alive, <laughs> but um, like I'm not the floor, floral girl, but I can walk into an empty room and work with people like mm-hmm. yourself who can put beautiful things together very quickly and close my eyes and like see what that client would want. And, but when it comes to like execution and the people and like dealing with all that it's like that is not what God put me on earth to do Mm -hmm. but you don't know those things until you are in it Mm -hmm. and you're like I don't want to do that anymore Mm -hmm. and then it's like so something has to change in order to get a different result and so it sounds to me like very quickly what's like special and unique and what makes you different is you did that one wedding and you're like, I'm not doing that again. I'm going to focus on this. So when people now say, well, Curry, can you do this, 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 and this? And your heart's telling you like, yes, I just want to help. But your business is telling you, do what you know and know what you do. Mm -hmm. Stick with it. Mm -hmm. And so could you say that's one thing that you've learned, like stick to that one thing of just design? Yes, I've actually since coming back, I had to turn down a couple people. They sent me emails and say, do you do planning? And I'm like, no, but here's a list of planners. Tell me your budget because I don't want to waste your time, first of all, because I'm not going to send you to someone who's out of your price range. So I do, even though I'm not a planner, I still have a preferred vendor list because my job is to still help with design. And so I'm not talking about finding an idea or a picture on Pinterest and duplicating it. I'm talking, looking at fabrics, looking at textures. People don't understand. Like I really wanted to go to school for interior design. And then I realized uh, that I hate financial aid and I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, And but there's still there's a history of behind polka dots that people don't know like it's all this stuff is not just something that just fell out the sky like there's a history behind stripes and colors and and patterns and my job is to help bring your vision to life or to create something that you will absolutely love I mean I thoroughly get joy out of this my husband got me a sketchbook for Christmas because I'm like he's like I'm so tired of you waking up in the middle of the night with these ideas and looking for scratch sheets of paper you know when I did my first style shoot ever six years ago I told the I told them I said yeah this centerpiece is gonna have a fish in it and my they're like what do you mean I was like it's gonna have a fish they're like 
that's tacky. I'm like, no, you just can't see the vision. And I got this beautiful, it was called Bahamas or Bermuda or something. It was a linen from Southern events. It was this beautiful aqua blue. And I did tons of candle and tons of water. And I had this beta fish that was huge and it was blue and had hints of purple. And still to this day, like it's everybody's favorite. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a design from six years ago. I wasn't even trying. So this year, Another thing that I experienced or that I actually had this like come to Jesus moment, like as a matter of fact, it was over the week, like Friday. I said, Curry, stick to what makes you different. And unique. Stick to what makes you different and unique. Like I will decorate the hell of a farm table. No problem. I have lanterns in my inventory. I have whatever you need. I have tons and tons of stuff. Like it's perfectly fine, but there's a reason that you're choosing me. There's a reason that you've sent me a DM or you sent me an email because you see that there's something else there. Like I just, when I learned how to do this, I got training from all different people like all over great place in Atlanta called halls. That's where I did my first couple classes and learned how to do it. I'm not a certified um, florist. You don't have to be in the state of Tennessee or in Nashville. I mean, it's, it's a great little perk, but because I don't do things like funerals and that kind of thing, I just don't think it's beneficial for me, but I genuinely, genuinely love what I do. I, that give me a bucket of flowers, some eighties music and I'm cool. Do you understand? Like that's, that's my thing. (laughs) That's awesome. That is awesome. And it's so great that you're young and you like know that about yourself now. Cause there's people that I see like surround surrounding like my mom and my grandma. And it's like, they try to talk about their life and like what they did. (laughs) And I'm like, like, I don't even open my mouth because in my head, I'm just like, wow, I'm, I really do have a talent and a gift and I'm so glad that I'm like using it and Mm -hmm. I have found my, my place because when I'm their age and I'm talking to like the young kids or whatever, it's like, you know, I'll be able to show like, look at all these amazing people that I got the opportunity and the honor to work with and like really make their special day amazing for Mm -hmm. them. And it's like, it is, it's like very humbling and life changing and It's freaking hard work. But at the end of the day, like you said, like you have to love people and you have to love what you do. But we all face challenges. Mm -hmm. And like you even said, I mean, you weren't even out of it for about a year and you come back and it's like all these new people and things have changed. And so you've had to realign yourself with like what's good, what's not good anymore and all that. But like, what would you say is a, a like challenge where you're like, Oh gosh, I didn't, I didn't see this coming. So I'm going to be completely honest. And one of the things that I am trying to work on, which is part of my goals is to go out and mingle with people and networking. The thing about this is that I'm starting to realize that this is a new era. Everybody is very into social media, which is fine, but I'm kind of old school and I like meeting people in person. And I kind of like, like I saw somebody and I was like, we're Facebook friends, but why did you just walk by me and not say nothing? Like, we don't know each other. Like, didn't you just like a picture of like my mom or my sister or somebody? Like, I just, I don't get that. And so I'm starting to learn that there are new people that are getting in this industry and that there are certain things that you have to do in order to keep up. And you do have to market yourself and you do have to advertise and you do have to you know, learn how to be um, more active on social media. But the networking thing, it's just like, I got to sit around with how many 20 year olds? How many in one room at one time? Like sweet mother of God, my oldest son is bigger than half of the people in this room. Like, but I'm just like, it's okay. Because if they have an open bar, I can get a couple drinks and I will be fine by the end of the night, you know, but it's just like, I got to pump myself up to it. It's like, they don't understand that I just can't make it down the road. Like I have to get a babysitter. I have to make sure everybody's fed before I walk out this door. I have to find something that is already ironed and hung up. Like they don't, this is a production for me just to get out the door to network. I can't throw on something you know and put on a fancy you know like a little cool little urban hat and throw some red lipstick on and be like I'm here people no it takes hours (laughs) (laughs) you know it's funny because 
a lot of creative people, like they're very comfortable in working in their space, but like in networking, like you and I, like we'll talk to the wall, like we'll talk to anybody. It's like, you know, we, we love people, but it is, it is challenging networking. And I would say also too, in the networking realm, especially where we live right now, there is something to do every Mm -hmm. single night, Mm -hmm. seven days a week. Like if I wanted to go eat and drink free every night, like I really probably could. Mm -hmm. So as you know, somebody like the new 20 year olds, you know, we all had to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I will say like when you and I first started, I think like social media did not exist. How we got referrals, my space. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember my space. Like, I I don't even think I did have that, but it, it wasn't really used, you know, for business purposes. And so the way you got referrals is you went out and you met people and you worked your ass off and you you over delivered and you mm-hmm. closed the loop to communication. And that's why people refer you, which I still think even above social media and I love it. It's a love hate relationship. Mm-hmm. Like it's a great tool to use. Um, we've probably both had opportunities where without social media, we would never even have known these people, met these people, had these clients. So I love it. But at the same time, I think that the younger people, um, that don't have a lot of experience rely heavily on social media. And while you have to have a presence and guys, consistency matters. And so consistently getting out there can be challenging Mm -hmm. and not so fun Mm -hmm. but also getting back to the basics and remembering that we're people we're human and we're not robots Mm -hmm. and I think that people really appreciate that even some clients where they're like oh my god somebody gave me a handwritten note like and it's funny because even though like you know I'm like paperless paperless it's still sweet like when clients write a handwritten note and you know a lot I feel like our clients are older, like in their 30s and, you know, <laughs> it might be their second or third marriage. But the younger people will go on social media and blast it everywhere. And that's great. But it's like at the end of the day, if you get a note in the mail, it's like, oh, people still remember like we're human and we're not so robotic. And it can be challenging. And you never know what someone has to go through to get to a networking meeting. And so being very intentional of like where you're networking, who's going to be there, which I never thought of that. Like I had a coach one time, he's like, so when you go to these networking meetings, like, do you look at the list of like, who's going to be there and like make a list of like, okay, I want to talk to this person, this person, and this person. And after I've talked to those three people for at least 90 seconds, I'm out. Like I'm going to go and follow up, take cards or whatever. And I'm like, uh, no, like I just show up. (laughs) I don't look at like the list because like, I don't care. I can talk to anybody. And he's like, no, 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 you should care. And you should be looking at who's going. Because if you can't learn from people that are going to be there, or you don't have any intention of doing business with them, why would you even go? And I'm like, hmm, that's a good thought. Like, so it made me step back and really evaluate, like, where should I be going? And is it worth getting ready? And is it is is it worth getting a babysitter and taking mm-hmm. the time away from family or just even working on your business, not in your business? And so that's very real. It's funny because most people want to ask, like, what's the challenge? They're like, oh, some of my clients, like, they just don't understand what I do. And, you know, again, it can go back to something that's very basic. It's like social media is a challenge. Keeping up is a challenge. Like networking can be a challenge. Mm-hmm. So I totally got gotcha. you. I, I totally feel you. And then the older I get, the more I'm like, God, I just want to stay at home sometimes. And like, I don't want to be on Facebook Live. And I don't, I mean, I remember when I first met you, I was like, Curry, you got to do Facebook Live. And like, you got to do Insta Story. And it was very new. And now, like Aja told me yesterday that uh, Instagram just came out with like Insta TV, like 48 hours ago. And she's like, now you got to do this. And I'm just like, damn, another thing. And she's like, why, like, why do you think of it that way? Like, it's another platform. It's another way to reach potential clients. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, <laughs> I guess I should be excited about it. Um, and so sometimes it's just like reframing mm-hmm. and um, being excited about what's new. But again, not 
don't forget like where you came from yeah. and like where you started yeah. and how did you start, you know, connecting with people? So I love that. Well, tell our listeners, Curry, where they can find you online. Okay, so I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook under Curry and Co Events. And I also have a Pinterest page. That one may be, well, I think that's under Curry and Co Events too. If not, it's under Curry Malone, but I'll switch it because Angela's giving me that look. So yeah, she's like, get it together, girl. <laughs> um, and we are working on revamping our website. So as soon as that's available, we will let everybody know. But that's pretty much, and it's Curry. It's C as in cat, U R R Y. I always have to spell it out. And everybody's like, Curry like the spice? I'm like, yeah. And then when I'm in Florida, everybody's like, Curry like the chicken? And I'm like, yeah. So I, that's, it's real. It's really my name. So that's how you can find us. That's awesome. It's like people say, is your real last name Prophet? And I'm like, yes, but it's spelled with two F's and two T's. And so, yeah, that's my real last name. Like I just didn't come up with it. But then like you play off your name a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like price for profit and be productive to be profitable. So yeah, in business, like it's worked really, really well. Well, Curry, thank you so much for being here today. And guys, make sure that you check out Curry on her website. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.